Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next installment of our series of webinars. Uh, my name is, again, Andy Radelet, and I am the Senior Admissions Advisor with CRCC Asia. Uh, for the majority of you guys who are going on our China locations, uh, Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, I will be the main uh, point of contact for you guys uh, throughout this whole pre-departure process. So hello to you guys watching uh, the live broadcast. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, for those who are watching at a different date, Hello to you as well. If you have any questions, please do feel free to comment in the video below or uh, you know, send us an email uh, throughout this whole presentation. Uh, once I get to the end, I'll let you know of the best uh, email to contact us at with any questions. So again, I'm coming to you from our Philadelphia headquarters uh, here in uh, Old City District of the city. Uh, it's wonderful to have you guys around and we'll get started. So today, we're going to be focusing on Shenzhen in particular. Why, what are the benefits to going to Shenzhen? Uh, really not just specifically in China, but really in the world. What all the benefits there are to go with that and why it's just a great city to live in internship aside. So um, if, without further ado, I'll share my screen with all you guys right now. And also a quick reminder um, for those that are uh, watching this live, please feel free. I do see you um, in the uh, comment section and also the live chat. If you have any other questions throughout the duration, feel free to uh, type them in and I'll answer them right away. So to get started here again, Shenzhen, uh, for those that are committed, uh, this is just kind of a preparatory video, uh, just kind of going over uh, what you can prepare for both going to Shenzhen, just living there, and also what's included in the program, really to kind of get you excited. For those that are still considering the opportunity or just want to learn a little bit more about it, this is a perfect video for you as well. I'm just going to be giving a real thorough overview of Shenzhen and, of course, our internship programs as a whole. So why intern abroad with CRCC Asia? Um, one of the benefits, a lot of people, interning abroad is really an interesting concept. And a lot of people think, well, I want to do an internship. I want to go to this really work in this great company, work in this really, you know, alpha city. What we're doing and what CRCC Asia does is we do everything for you, essentially. Um, it still is a challenging program. Again, we really kind of take your hand and walk you through it. But we're there to really support you. Um, from the second you, you submit the application through the visa process, through the company confirmation process, even um, once you do arrive on the ground, um, you will get to know our program staff quite well, and you'll be rest assured that you, know, you will be in good hands. We, of course, facilitate the living accommodations for you guys um, and also um, you know, prepare you for the internship itself. But there's also a lot of events that are included in the program as well, and I'll be discussing those, of course, throughout the remainder of this presentation. So why, why go to a place, why do an international internship specifically, and that's, or in China, and that's to really broaden your country-specific knowledge. A knowledge of China as a whole, um, not really you know, specific to cities, is something that's very, very applicable to really our global economy and as we look forward into the future. China is really crucial to the global economy. It's, again, one of the second largest economy in the world, right behind the U.S., um, and it really will stay that way uh, for quite some time. Um, and the partnership between the U.S. and China, the U.K. and China, even Australia and China is really, you know, they're really partnerships that are going to be strong. Of course, you've seen the news, a lot of different things, um, uh, but what we do feel really positively about it. And going out there to understand China, um, breathe the air, get to know people, and most importantly, expand your network work is something that's you know really really crucial which is a perfect segue into the next slide developing a global network this is my personal favorite uh, reason for doing an internship and uh, an internship abroad I should say is you're just going to China is just the people that you meet uh, in particularly in Shenzhen as well there's a very very strong culture of entrepreneurship so the vast majority of the people that you meet are very motivated people really have a goal for what they're trying to achieve maybe they work for some large company uh, 
that's originally based in the western part of the world and were sent to Shenzhen, or they moved to Shenzhen to really pursue their dream, um, you know, pursue that entrepreneurial enterprise and get exposure to this, the attack and the, um, you know, that sort of thing as well. And also, this kind of goes without saying, but it's a great addition to your resume. Um, now, just having that line in there, internship in Shenzhen, China, is that immediately going to get you that dream job of yours? Probably not, but it's all about how you convey the experience. And that's something that was CRCC Asia, both before you end up going on the internship, during the internship, and after. We're there to support you and really make sure you reflect and understand the type of experience that you had. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a challenging program. It's something that is really not easy. You're gonna go out of your comfort zone, but that's really, really where a lot of the growth happens. Um, and we're there, to, we're, we're there to help you out, really understand you know, the daily, you know, what you're doing on a daily basis and how just incredibly gruel of an opportunity this is and how to convey that to um, you know, in an in interview or at some point in the future, really describing, of course, how it's going to, how it benefited you from a professional standpoint and also from a personal standpoint as well. So uh, really kind of going through the reasons to intern in Shenzhen, as you can see, it's a real gorgeous place. Uh, it's just north. It's in mainland China, but just north of Hong Kong. So Shenzhen is really one of the most innovative places in the world. Many of you probably know it as the Silicon Valley of China and it is every bit of that. Um, it's really home to a lot of these you know, major tech companies but is also very entrepreneurial. The vast majority of the companies in Shenzhen are in that startup stage or that SME. Um, so there's a lot of international investment. There's a lot of incubators that are really focused in on primarily the technology sector. Um, a lot of engineering uh, opportunities are really there. And um, really, it's also known as the hardware capital of the world. Uh, of course, there's hardware and software. There's still a lot of software opportunities. But hardware is really the speciality of Shenzhen. Um, really youthful atmosphere. The vast majority, I touched on this before, vast majority of people are, it's really one of the younger cities in China by far, very similar to the Silicon Valley that we had, that the U.S. has on the, on the West Coast, up in the Bay Area. Very young atmosphere and really focusing in on like those coders and those tech businesses. Um, but it's not at all limited to that. Um, there's still a lot, it's still, you know, an alpha city with 15 to 20 million people there. So there's still opportunities within green technology, which of course is very associated with IT, but also in the finance areas and really in the marketing side of things as well. For those who do not know what a unicorn is, a unicorn is actually a privately held company that is worth um, at least of 1 billion US dollars. And that's something that a lot of these startups, that's what they strive to be. And again, very similar to the Silicon Valley and the US on the west coast of America. Uh, for example, Google likes to, they, they buy a lot of the companies. So one of these companies' dreams in Shenzhen is to at least you know, become a unicorn or be bought out by one of these unicorns. And Shenzhen is really one of the best places in the world to understand this process, kind of understand what these dreams are. And if, if any of you have aspirations of being an entrepreneur at some point in your life, getting that exposure to a Shenzhen, getting exposure to the Chinese market is something that's extremely, extremely um, beneficial to you. Just a few, uh, just kind of go a little bit further into what a unicorn is, as I mentioned, valued it. 1 billion US dollars, the, gro the growth rate of, ch of, of in China specifically is astronomical, especially in the last couple years. And a lot of that stems in Shenzhen. There's also a lot that have been, that have sprouted up in places like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou as well. But Shenzhen really is, you know, one of the forefront. As you, you know, Beijing has the most, 41% of the unicorns in China. Um, so, you know, there's, no matter where you can go, a lot of the large, cities in China have their own little tech centers, but uh, Shenzhen is uh, really focused on that, and this is what kind of makes up that city. 
again, this is kind of, there's, there's a lot of innovative parts about Shenzhen. It's one of the most innovative cities. I mentioned that a couple um, in the world. It's a very unique city in that it's very new. You walk in the streets and really the vast majority of it did not exist about 25 to 30 years ago when it was just a small little fishing village. Uh, when China uh, really started opening up economically to the rest of the world, that, uh, uh, the premier or the leader of China at the time, uh, Deng, Deng Xiaoping, designated Shenzhen as one of the first special economic zones. So that small little sleepy fishing village grew what it is today. So a lot of this, um, the skyline and everything you see on these slides is extremely new and really did not exist um, just a few decades ago. And it really focuses on patents, of course, as I mentioned a couple times, and really you're noticing a theme throughout this presentation, of course, is that the um, there's a huge focus on entrepreneurship here. There's a lot of government investing to really focus in on the tech side of things here, and something that's really focused in on, as you can see, there's been a huge spike and increase in patent applications, and they're definitely catching up to that of the U.S. and will and have already actually this maps a little out of date. Have already overtaken Japan with that. Now, location-wise, uh, out of all our program locations in China, uh, Shenzhen is in the south. So very similar to Hong Kong, there's a bunch of beaches that you can go to. It's definitely more of that tropical feel rather than that of Beijing or even Shanghai. So there's palm trees and really the opportunity to get you that taste of vacation that you can have on the weekends or even um, you know in the evenings after work. Um, it's definitely going to be hot there for those of you going out in the summer. Uh, so definitely be sure to, you know, be sure to pack your shorts on a lot of, um, you know, uh, maybe swimsuits or anything like that. In addition to those work clothes that you guys are going to be packing as well. Really that whole region of China, um, this Guangdong, province is really the, is actually the most populated in all of China. There's a lot of very, very large um, metropolises very, or all around, not just, of course, Shenzhen is one, but just straight to the north, as you can see, is Dongguan, which is home to a lot of manufacturing plants. Guangzhou is a city many of you have heard of, also one of the largest cities in China. Um, but this is really a hub that's so many that, that's that's really impacting a lot of the global economy. It's one of the most heavily populated parts of the world. Even Zhuhai, right across, is an absolutely massive city. So if you want to, you know, take a trip, take a trip during uh, the weekend or anything like that. There's a lot of different places to check out, and this is also something that uh, that our staff on the ground can help you out with. Exploring Hong Kong, I mean, of course, Shenzhen is really borders Hong Kong. They are right next to each other. We do highly recommend that you receive your visa before making any trips to Hong Kong. Um, of course, we do help you out with the visa, but it's really important that you guys are aware that you do need a multiple entry Chinese visa in order to go to Hong Kong and come back. Technically going into Hong Kong is leaving China, so it's imperative that you guys have a multiple entry visa. Now, of course, you can't. You guys can apply for these during the visa application process, which for those of you guys starting in May 30th, we will not begin until probably later February. So be, be on the lookout for an email from me to begin that process. But anyways, you can apply for a multiple entry visa, but it's absolutely not guaranteed. Uh, the Chinese consulates can be quite particular, um, and there's really no way to guarantee any visa. So before you make any plans to go to Hong Kong during your program, please have received your visa and ensure it is a multiple entry. If you want to explore Hong Kong, again, for US citizens, you don't need a visa to go there. Um, you really just show up it's very similar to going like to canada or something you get a visa you can stay up to 90 days there but again it is leaving china if you want to go before the program or after the program that's perfectly fine but it is a reminder do not do so unless you have a multiple entry visa during the program so now to really touch upon the program logistics uh, if you guys have any questions again please feel free to look at the live chat i am keeping tabs on you guys so as you, again, the, the internship is guaranteed. That's what we do, that's the service we are providing. And for those, we get the question, we get a lot, do I have to speak Chinese? Not at all. 
you are guaranteed an English speaking supervisor at the very least. You may have a few coworkers or colleagues during the internship that English may not be their first language or they may not be 100% fluent in it. Uh, but that's part of the cultural immersion experience develop how to develop those kind of, how to develop those relationships and that guanxi which is essentially means connections in china which is incredibly important we help you out with that as well um then of course visa processing we make we get you it all squared away so that you're legally able to do an internship out there just a quick just a quick repeat of the previous slide we are unable to guarantee that it will be multiple entry that decision lies solely with the chinese consulate the accommodation in Shenzhen, you will be living in a fully furnished and serviced accommodation. So you'll have your own private room, your own private area, and then you share a kitchen and a living room with one, maybe two other interns that are on the same program as you. Um, and then, of course, airport pickup. We do. We will be tracking your flight if you arrive on your start date. It's actually Shenzhen in particular is a little bit of an interesting um, in terms of your arrival. We do ask you to fly into Hong Kong Airport actually, and from the Hong Kong Airport, you will um, take a ferry over into Shenzhen. It's very very simple to do, and we provide you with thorough in depth instructions on how to do that. Um, but it is it's something that uh, it's very easy. We provide you with instructions, and our, our staff will be tracking your flight, so we'll know where to where where to pick you up from, which is where the ferry drops you off, and we'll know when you're going to arrive. Um, but we actually again ask you to fly into Hong Kong, and please do so on the day on your program start date. As a reminder, the program start date is not the day the internship begins. That's the day we ask you to arrive in Shenzhen. Uh, for those that have paid the first installment payment, uh, you should have access to the pre-departure document. It has all that information in there to please arrive again on your program start date between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. in Hong Kong. And you take just a quick ferry over to Shenzhen. It is very, very simple. And of course, there's a lot of instructions there. We, have to, we touch base on that and kind of provide you with further guidance before you head out. Then the day after you arrive on that Friday, there we conduct the induction day it was essentially an orientation we ease you into living in china for an extended period of time and um you know get really prepare you for the internship as well we provide you with a sim card for your phone as well as a metro card for public transportation that includes the subway the bus we teach you how to use all that all that public transportation as well as the vast majority of you guys will be using that to get to and from work the following monday is the first day of the internship and on that first day we will drive you to the company and introduce you to your supervisor make sure you get acclimated get comfortable and then going forward you will be commuting to and from work as i mentioned each day and then this goes without saying but we have a full staff on the ground as well program managers are there to support you 24 hours a day until the day you arrive so for emergency reasons if something happens at 1 a.m at night we're literally a text away there will be ras that live in the same accommodation as you guys and we're there only to support for emergency purposes so we're there for you if you ever want to talk about the internship or adjusting to China or whatever it might be we're always there for you guys this is just an example of the airport pickup uh, this is actually taken in Beijing and again as I mentioned in Shenzhen is a little bit different of a process but still very very easy nonetheless as a reminder, you fly into Hong Kong Airport, take the ferry over into Shenzhen, and we will be waiting for you where the ferry drops you off. It's a very easy process. And again, we're here to, you know, if you do need a little bit more uh, guidance with that, feel free to give me a call, send me an email, and be happy to chat you through it. It's also concise instructions are also listed on your pre-departure packet. Accommodation, as I mentioned, here's a few pictures of what it might look like. You have your own private room, private area, share a nice living room, a nice kitchen with an intern or two that's on the same program, same gender, of course. And of course, it is in a very uh, centralized part of the city. So the commutes are really not always that bad. 
However, Shenzhen is a very large city, but we do our best to accommodate that as best as possible. I would expect the commutes to be somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour. That's usually average, but of course we don't want you guys, you know, going two hours to and from work each day. It's a little bit excessive, so we do our best, but it is, you know, good to prepare that sometimes the commutes may reach up to an hour. It's an example of induction day. Again, it's very, you know, we, if you guys are jet lagged, we totally get that. Um, it's more of just easing you in, getting you guys prepared. We have some China, the meals are included on this day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're just easing you in. There's sometimes we throw a scavenger hunt in there with you guys, give you guys a tour of the city, tour of the subways, just kind of best preparing you for the internship as a whole. Um, touching upon just various Chinese customs that you can prepare for, and just being there and kind of going over the whole program. Also gives you a chance to really meet the rest of the interns that are on the program as well, and kind of easing you into there. First day company drop off, so the first weekend, you guys are there, Saturday and Sunday, you guys have to yourself. So again, a lot of you guys will be jet lagged. I certainly get very jet lagged whenever I travel across the ocean. My body just needs that time to adjust. We give that to you to really do whatever you want to do. Sleep in, explore the city, um, whatever it may be. Um, just so you're well prepared for the first day, which is that following Monday. As I mentioned before, we actually drive you literally to the host company. Um, get you situated, introduce you to the supervisor, make sure you're comfortable, get acclimated, and going forward you will be commuting to and from work each day. Throughout the program, in addition to the various cultural and social events that we offer, usually once a month we have a community outreach day. This usually varies depending on what's going on around the city. This could be anything like visiting some orphans, uh, visiting a hospital, just getting out there and getting active within the community gives you guys a different, I guess, insight into Chinese culture away from kind of the, the tech heavy things around Shenzhen, giving you insight a little bit more to that cultural skills and kind of insight that, you know, very rare opportunities. And a lot of the interns really, really enjoy this day um, and really have a good time. The in-country support, again, there's events and networking opportunities that we provide for you guys. Once a month, we have a, we put together a China business seminar for you guys. And that's where we bring in business leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs who've been very successful in Shenzhen to come in, talk to you guys, give you guys a lecture about what they do, what the organization they represent, just a general insight into how to do business in a place like China or more specifically Shenzhen. It's also an opportunity for you to really get to know and expand your network. Business cards are included in this program. We give you guys like several hundred, so you guys will definitely not run out. The most important thing to kind of bring back to what I was mentioning at the beginning of this uh, webinar is to really, really focus in on meeting people. Meeting people is the most important thing that you can do. The other interns on the program, the people that you meet in Shenzhen, that's where you really make the most out of this experience. The internships going to look great, but please meet as many people as possible. We're also very uh, CRCC agent and our staff are very much in the loop with other networking events. Some of them may require an extra charge because they're not sponsored by CRCC Asia, like with Chambers of Commerce and things like that. We'll notify you. Again, we want to get you acclimated to a place like Shenzhen and really immersed in that environment because it is, again, one of the most unique places on earth. Touched on this in the last slide, but 24-7 emergency support. We're there to support you guys with everything. If you need to go to the hospital at 1 a.m., we're, we're there to pick you up, get all the insurance situated, and make sure all is well there. Our program managers will also have weekly drop-in sessions. Uh, this is usually you know, like a Monday night or a Tuesday night. We'll be in like the lobby of your accommodation, very similar like an often office hours. It's not mandatory at all that you guys stop in, but if you guys want to come and talk about you know, something cool that you saw on the streets of, Sh of Shenzhen or, you know, want a little bit of advice on, you know, gelling in your work environment, whatever it might be, we're there to help. I mean, we're there 24 seven, but we'll be, you know, if you guys want to see us face to face, come to these drop in sessions. That's where we are. We'll also be focusing on some like learning if you, you know, Cole's getting, maybe give you some tips, things to do around the city. We're just, again, there to help.
So the application process, um, this is a very, very rough overview of it, but of course you will want to apply on our website. If you just go on our website, crccasia.com, in the upper right hand corner, you will see a big red apply button. The application is very, uh, very quick, very simple to fill out. We just need your general information. And then you're going to schedule a time to, to, for an advising session, which is a phone call. Uh, with most likely me, if you are interested in, or you are, if you do want to go to China, um, you will be speaking with me, and I'll just kind of ease you through. We want to learn about you, what type of internship you're looking to have, and we'll of course tell you, you know, what, how pragmatic that is, and what other opportunities we can look into. Provide and answer, of course, any questions that you have. Um, if we do find you suitable for the program, we will send you an offer later. Uh, an offer letter, excuse me, the following day or within 48 hours, um, and that will just kind of give you a brief overview of your itinerary and directions on how to uh, submit your first acceptance payment which will uh, confirm you on the program and really secure your spot before, of course, we go into different, you're beginning the placement process, which begins by paying your first installment payment, which is about half the tuition. And of course, getting you confirmed with a company. These are just an outline of these sectors. Uh, there's 14 of them, and they virtually cover the vast majority of um, majors and things like that. There are a few majors that are a little bit, can be a bit tricky uh, for different internships, primarily in China. That's what the admissions advisors are for, to really kind of give you, um, again, be pragmatic with you about what the opportunities are. But again, all fields of study are virtually covered within these sectors. Uh, Shenzhen specifically, again, these, these are doable for every location, not just Shenzhen. If, for example, if you have a focus on another sector that we think another location might be a little bit better, we'll definitely provide you there. But if you're set on coming to a place like Shenzhen, we can certainly, again, do our best to make that happen. We ask you to select a first choice, second choice, and third choice sector. We really, really focus in on the first choice sector and of course the specifics that you outlined for us during the advising call. I'm sure we do our best to really get you that perfect fit for an internship. Again, the top three sectors at all, before I get into this, I just want to say it is not at all limited to these three sectors. These are just the most prevalent. And again, you guys have probably put this together for my call. Um, business, we can do business. Business is very open. It really depends on the specific type of industry you want to focus in on and a lot of specifics with that. This is very, usually business internships can be very much um, I guess, customized for your interests in specific. And then engineering, uh, that kind of goes without saying that, uh, you know, one of the engineering hubs, whether that be in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, software engineering, whatever it might be, Shenzhen is the spot for it. Technology, IT, if you want to go into hardware, video game design, there's a lot we can go into there, but it's not at all limited to these three sectors. Just to, here's just a two, um, example placements of interns from this past summer, uh, China Life Health Industry Group. Another thing Shenzhen is also known for is the healthcare system. Uh, primarily in engineering, there's a lot of healthcare uh, manufacturers there, or healthcare product manufacturers. Um, it's a massive, massive hub for that, and they take in, like, if you want to get into medical sales, or if you want to, you know, get into that type of market, um, there's a huge, huge demand for that. Um, and of course, in Junung, which is you know an incubator, um, a lot of incubators. I know I mentioned that before in the webinar. A lot of incubators focusing on really nurturing these young startup businesses, and of course, making them the next Alibaba or whatever it might be. This is an overview of the payment process. I touched on this before. If you do want to commit to the program, we ask we ask you to submit that initial payment of five hundred dollars. Um, that will just confirm your spot. Once you are confirmed, we, at, we ask that you submit the first installment payment within one month of, uh, of submitting that, that acceptance fee. Uh, the sooner you pay that, the sooner we will begin the placement process. So the placement process, you probably saw on a couple slides uh, before this. We, we like to get you placed within anywhere from four to six weeks prior to your start date. Um, 
Most times, again, you could even get placed even before that, but it is entirely dependent on when you pay that first installment. You don't have to pay that second installment, or as we also call the second or the final installment, until one until seven days after you've been confirmed with the host company. So you already know who you're working with, what company you're working with, uh, before you even pay the majority of your tuition, really. So again, it's more than just an internship. This is just to kind of recap everything. An internship, if you get an internship in Shenzhen, that's great, but there's a lot of different factors you probably haven't thought of. Where are you going to live? If you know anybody there, kind of a community of sorts. And really easing it in. It is, it is a challenging uh, program. It's, it's very, it is very similar to study abroad, but as I like to say, take doing that internship program it is taking it one step further. Um, you know, it's a really, really interesting cultural immersion process. And again, CRCC Asia is there to really support you on just about everything, getting the visa so we ensure your legality there, airport pickup, orientation, we're, we're there the whole nine yards. So if you have any other questions, please reach out to this email, internships at crccasia.com. Uh, we will respond within 24 hours. Uh, again, this goes to me directly, and I will get back to you, or a colleague of mine at the very least will get back to you with any inquiry that 